and we are getting ready for today's testing I am on a private permission I've got my ranging target there in the front at 30 meters and don't worry I'm not going to use this camera for the lens and then I've got a target there at 100 meters or 110 yards and this is going to be our shooting range um, we've got a bit of a challenge today I've got some local folks watching me so I need to be very very careful as always on any working farm that we are but if you can hear in the background the wind is picking up it is starting to pump so this is going to be very 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 interesting I've chosen a spot where I've got some protection from the wind and also where my chair is situated I've got some protection from the back regarding that so that the mic doesn't pick up too much noise so we're gonna try a couple of things today all right that's the range that's the setup let's rip it the gun in use today is a mark 1 FX but this one is not standard whatsoever on the back you'll see that there's a very very nice and big 720 plenum in there this has got the hammer spring the heavy hammer spring not the tungsten one it has been cut kitted with a dual flow port this is the 700 millimeter superior heavy liner and this baby snorts these guys at a massive speed to give you guys an indication I'm shooting on power level 2 with the 26 and 25 grain slugs and I'm shooting them at plus minus 960 feet per second I do, I do have the crony with me so we can uh, finish that set up there on the top I've got an element helix scope with some very nice scope tape there to assist me with my distances I also brought the rangefinder along so our distances are accurate and we're gonna have a lot of fun today so watch this space let's go um, who would have known that 100 meters is so far <laughs> let me just get my breath back and then we can really have some fun at 100 meters Right, folks as you can hear the wind is starting to pick up um, I'll mute the sound as far as I can I possibly can to get the the wind out of the ears first up we're gonna shoot the 25.5 grain Zans now I'm not gonna fiddle around with short distances today we're going straight out to the hundred meters I've already zeroed the gun it's running at about 985 feet per second uh, everything is set up at the hundred meters so I'm gonna shoot five groups of five to get a good indication of the consistency of these slugs and also the accuracy in that regard quite simple five by five at a hundred meters let's rip it the wind is really not my friend it is gusting down there does have a massive impact but the groupings don't look too bad wow all right that was the best grouping by far but on the other hand it's 100 meters from here I can't see but before I go and fetch the target I've got some ammo left I've got some air left let's empty all the other pellets or the slugs into that middle target as luck would have it that's the end of my shooting for today the gun just sprung a leak um, can I say one thing to FX Right, I know what's going to happen. A couple of you are going to make those rude comments that I can't shoot shite to save myself. And you're probably right. But if you look at the conditions on the day, that wasn't too bad. Shooting a less than 2 MOA at 100 meters with gusting wind is not too bad. And compliments to the Zan slugs in this regard. The grease grouping would have been in less than half a MOA if it wasn't for one idiot wind pull shot in that direction 
but all the groups were sub 2 MOA for a 25 grain slug at 100 meters with a freaking gun that gave up on me. I don't think that is too bad. But is there something more? It is not often that I do a double take on slugs. Um, I'll post the initial results. I'm not scared of that. I probably did in this video. By the time I shoot the, the second round, I've probably changed my mind again. But in any case, um, the first time round, the first round with the slugs, the gun was acting up and it, the pop-up valve or something like that got stuck in there somewhere along the line. The consistency and the accuracy wasn't there. So I filled up the gun again. Um, everything is working 100%. Time to let it rip. Sounds 25.5 grain. Right, uh, these are the sights. Take two. Gun is filled up, ready to rumble. Just gonna do one or two sighters, and then I'll do the four by five shot groups. Right, these zanes are running at 985 feet per second. These are the 25.5 grainers. Wind, the wind, all right. So the Zan slugs are affected by wind like any other slug, but I must admit this is gusty. This is not fun. I've got 18 shots left in the magazine. 18 shots at that center bull. No, I'm lying. 16 shots at the center bull. Oh wow, I need to go and measure that. I think that was a pretty decent 16 shot group. At this stage, at 30 meters, these zones were immaculate. Immaculate, immaculate. At 100 meters, yes, the wind does take them a little bit and the wind is swirling there in the front. But with that 16 shot group, I can live with that any day in this wind. Well done. All right, that's the 25.5s. Let's go measure up, give you guys the final results. Alright, enough said about the wind. On target number one, you can see that there was one shot, the first one that was right low, the other four grouped immaculately, no problems there. On the second group as well, again, one right low, the other four close to each other, but then group C. Wow, there are four shots through that little hole and one just barely to the left. Now that is a 34 millimeter grouping that or just over an inch, less than one MOA at 100 meters in gusting wind. Nothing to sneeze at. The last one, although it looks bad, that is pure wind. The height of those slugs are less than a half an inch in height. It's just disgusting, disgusting, in gusting wind that pulled it from left to right and doing a 180 on my buttocks. All right, that was quite nice. Let's see what the heavier 30 grain Zans can do. Finally, time for the 30.5 grain Zan slugs. 100 meters running at 985 feet per second. I don't think the wind is going to be too bothering us at this stage. Too bothersome, what's a pretty right, right English word, somewhere along the line there. So let's do this. Just going to shoot two sighters and then I'm going to do my 4x5 shot groups. Man, the wind did a 180 on me again. That's not fair. And another 180 on me. <laughs> Alright, let's see how many rounds I've got left. Let's go for that center target. Oh, I think I'm off the rig. Look at them drop. 
definitely off the rig. <laughs> Alright, the last eight shots definitely off the rig. Man, these gauges are so inaccurate. All right, let's go measure those up. Um, on the last group, I'm going to ignore the last eight or nine shots there, just to give you guys an indication of if the gun stays on the rig, what these slugs are up to. Let's measure up. Given the extreme wind conditions, I am not at all phased by the results I got. Just over 1.1 MOA, 100 meters in gusting winds, really, really that is not bad shooting, even from a shooter like myself. Going over to 2 inches, look at the height of those, that is just the wind changing 180 degrees on me every single time in between shots. Grouping number three was meh, not earth shattering. Again, the height was not bad at all. In other words, the wind was a sideways movement. And then on the last one, absolute, absolute wind. No two ways about it. Emptying the rest of the magazine, I got another eight decent shots right into the middle before the air dropped below the rig pressure. And you can immediately see the downward shift the moment I lost some speed there. Unfortunately, these gauges supplied by the manufacturer is not the greatest in the world and it will cost you a couple of bob to exchange them to something that is really accurate. So, from a perspective, Zan at 100 meters, I think I can shoot a heck of a lot better. I'll wait for a little bit less windy day and I'll take them back out to 100 meters. But my initial testing shows they are extremely promising. Well done, Zani. That's all, folks.